Move. You want me to move? That didn't really work. Well, I tried to do a burnout, but I just overheated the clutch. Huh. Do you need to take my college money again? By some miracle, my 2007 BMW M5 is finally finished. There is not a single warning light on the dash right now or in the iDrive system, which is amazing. It's amazing for any BMW, especially when you consider what I started with, with this M5, which is considered the most unreliable BMW ever made. And this one was in really, really rough shape. Now getting this M5 to the finish line didn't require any specialized BMW scan tools or thousands of dollars worth of parts. Rather, all it took was a lightly modified $1 wire hanger, a closed wire hanger. <laughs> That's it. But now that this car is fixed, uh, you know, it still feels broken and I am still really terrified to drive this thing. Now, of course, before this wire hanger fixed all of my issues, I had already spent thousands of dollars fixing all of the obvious problems. When I bought this M5 for only $6,500, it was hemorrhaging oil from an oil cooler and the transmission was shifting horribly. It was shifting so hard that it felt like it was trying to punch its way out of the car and into another universe. It was horrible and it barely made it up to my mechanic, the car wizard shop. And I had to spend about $2,700 on a used transmission and oil cooler to fix those issues. But there were a few other surprises like the AC condenser decided to pop randomly and it leaked out all the AC juice. So with the labor and those surprises and the used parts, I spent about $4,500 fixing this M5, but I was still left with a very, very broken car. Despite spending thousands of dollars, it still, it still didn't work. So we had hit a major roadblock, but there was some good news. The shifts were much smoother and I didn't have that giant oil leak anymore. But anytime I tried to drive this car hard, go over 4,500 RPM, it would immediately give me the friendly chime of death, the bong, and then it would light up like a laser light show at Mannheim Steamroller Concert, and then it would go into limp home mode. I, I was totally... It was so frustrating, and even the car wizard with his massive beard of knowledge couldn't figure out what was going on. He didn't have the BMW specialty tools, nor did he have experience with M5s to really know what was going on and he could have started guessing but he didn't want to waste my money by guessing and just throwing parts of the car so he suggested that i talk to a bmw specialist have him look at the car and see what was going on now thankfully i knew a bmw specialist his name was johnny and he is actually a very strange guy because most mechanics that i encounter hate working on their own cars hate them so they end up commuting to work to their european specialty shops in honda accords and toyota camrys but johnny this european car specialist he goes to work in an M5 like mine. So I told Johnny what was going on, that the car was going into limp home mode once we got over 4,500 RPM, and we were having codes related to crank sensor issues along with misfires. And he didn't even need to plug in the car to know what was going on. He's just so familiar with them that he just went right to work. He put the car up in the air, removed the crank sensor, and started manually turning the engine with a big wrench so he could manually inspect the flywheel. Well, not the flywheel, but actually this Hall effect sensor on the flywheel, which is like a spinning disc with evenly spaced teeth that gives information to the crank sensor on how fast the engine is turning, how fast the crankshaft is, is turning. He suspected that when the wizard removed the transmission or put it back in that he bent one of the teeth, which would become an issue as the car got to higher RPM. The crank sensor would get confused and trigger a limp home mode. Now, if more than one of the teeth on there, which are evenly spaced, unlike mine, uh, were bent, then it wouldn't run at all. So he cranked the engine slowly with the wrench, manually inspecting the teeth, and sure enough, one was bent backwards. Now this is kind of a big deal because to really replace that Hall effect sensor on the flywheel, you would have to remove the transmission again. 
Yikes. But he got the bright idea to pry the tooth back out using the little hole, the little access that he had when he removed the crank sensor. And to achieve this, he took a wire hanger, a normal $1 wire hanger, bent it to the right size, shoved it up into the hole where this bent tooth was, and manually pulled it back out. It actually worked. We started up the car, it revved, it revved freely. It had no problem going through the gears. The car had all of its power again. For the first time, I knew how an M5 was supposed to drive. Now, eventually a check engine light did come on for the misfires, but that was kind of something we already knew about. We had to replace all 10 of the coils and plugs, something you do around 100,000 miles anyway, and that really solved all of my issues for good. The only other thing I had to do was put on two new front tires to match the rears. The fronts were totally rotten. So the wire hanger fix and the tune-up cost me $1,170, and the tires cost me $420. And if you total that up with my $6,500 purchase price and $4,500 in repairs, I'm now $12,608, I think, into this M5, which is still kind of under the money. It's, it's about what I think this M5 would go for if I wanted to sell it right now as is. So I'm sitting pretty good in this thing, except it still doesn't feel right. And it, actually, it didn't feel right when this thing was brand new from the factory. Got some complaints. <laughs> So, yes, I still have a lot of anxiety owning this car, and I do feel like it came from the factory, brand new, broken, thanks to this SMG transmission. I think it has to be the worst transmission I have ever encountered in so many ways. And even though this one's totally sorted, it's, it's still a mess. Right now, I have it in normal drive mode and in the default speed for the shifts. This is where they recommend you have your shifts at and it is painfully slow. SMG stands for Sequential Manual Gearbox, and it's basically a manual gearbox without a clutch. There's a computer controlling the clutch and the shift instead of a gear lever and your foot. It's like a kid that can't learn how to drive a manual transmission, so they just sloppily shift through really slowly, revving the engine. It's, it's awful. So this is normal drive. I'm in second. Shift. Any, there it was. I can count. I don't know how many Mississippis. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. So over a second to shift in this normal mode. Now I can dial it up if I want to, which does speed it up somewhat. There we go. That's not much better. That may have trimmed half a second off of it. One Mississippi. Yeah, it's, it's still still a full second to shift. And amazingly, this default shift point isn't the slowest shift point. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, you can make it shift even slower by putting it in this number one mode, and then it's it's laughably slow. <laughs> That's just awful. It's also revving way too much, holding gears for way too long, so you never want to use the automatic mode. You want to go and shift it yourself, which is fine, except the paddle shifters on this thing are a very brittle plastic. And the first time I ever used it, the downshift paddle broke off in my hand. The wizard had to glue it back together. So I'm scared to death to use the paddle shifters, but if I use the gear selector, it's like they installed it backwards. To upshift, you have to pull down. It doesn't make any sense. Up is down and, and down is up. Now all this can be changed really quickly by putting the car into M mode. It also gives you the extra 100 horsepower that you don't get without being in M mode. And then you can really let it rip. And then the shifts get a lot better, a lot faster. But I'm told if I drove it like this all the time, then it would wear out the clutch a lot quicker than it should. And I'm also terrified to drive this car hard for another reason. What's it beeping for? It started 
beeping for no reason. So if you all remember my first video where the wizard went through and gave me an estimate for all of the repairs on this M5, it included changing the Vanos high pressure oil pump as well as the rod bearings. Now these two preventative items will stop this engine from killing itself, which this engine could do right now at any moment. 100,000 miles is about when you want to start thinking about doing this because the rod bearings, they start eating away at the copper lining in them or whatever, and then that would destroy the engine as the rods start knocking. Now the Vanos oil pump is separate from the main engine oil pump, and its job is to send a shot of high pressure oil into the Vanos system, the car's variable valve timing stuff in, on the top end. And when it fails, it sends metal shavings throughout the engine and completely destroys it. There's no warning when this is going to happen. It just happens and kills your motor. So if I wanted to fix the rod bearings and the Vanos pump as a preventative measure, it would cost me another $5,000. That's what the car wizard quoted me and what I haven't done yet, which I've already spent $6,000 on this thing fixing it. So it's hard to stomach that, especially when I have issues with this car. I cannot stand this transmission that's installed backwards. It's, it, it's slow, it's stupid. Uh, and equally stupid right next to it is this iDrive system, which is equally hard to use and really annoying. And as beautiful as this car looks, and the fact that it has 500 horsepower and it's a great performer, I, I just can't see myself spending another $5,000 to have a slightly more reliable BMW, because really there's, there's so many other things that could fail at any moment. At, at $20,000, I could think of so many other cars that I would rather have than this thing. And if I spend that $5,000 on this car, then, then I wouldn't get it back. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't regret buying this car. It is really cool, and I'm glad that I had the chance to bring it back from near death. This thing probably would have ended up as a parts car if I didn't come along, and it was a cool experience to go through and see what it took to bring back the most unreliable BMW, but I don't think I'm the right guy to own this car long term. And before I give my final thought, let's check out the garage. There's been a lot of progress while I was gone in California and Florida. It's really impressive. All right, come on in and check this out. Walls have come down and a roof, a roof has gone up. Come on, keep coming. Keep, keep, keep coming, come on. Would you just look? Look at this. You're working my yodeling, but it's a lot bigger now. Originally, the garage ended here. There was a wall all the way across here, but that's now gone. They put up some extra bracing, and now the new garage has met with the old garage. And you can see how much space I have. The ceilings are so tall. It'll make it so easy for me to stack cars back here, probably three across. So we'll have six cars all stacked neatly. And then here is my ghetto hoopty garage door. They'll put in a real garage door soon, but this is just to keep people from coming in. I am so excited, very excited, but I don't think the M5 is going to be around when this new garage is completed. Well, talk about symbolism here. A blue dumpster, a red dumpster. I mean, really, the car's not that bad, but I think this is the end of the line for me with this M5. Although, it may be harder to sell it. Gee, many, it's windy. It may be harder to sell it than I think. I'm not really a good salesman, even though I was in the car business for a long time when it comes to my personal cars, and I really had a hard time selling my old M, which is supposed to be a much more reliable car, uh, but every time I tried to sell it, it kept breaking. I, I fixed it so many times, I spent thousands of dollars on it, and then eventually just gave up and settled for way less than what I wanted for it and sold it to a guy who's also an automotive masochist. I, I, I don't know why he bought it, honestly. So. This thing may be around for a while longer while I try and find a home for it. So it may continue to be, like I said earlier, a shiny red monument to my stupidity for a while longer. And it is very pretty. Maybe I don't have to sell it. I don't know. Thank you for watching. Can this car play on move? at least